go from there. Well, my main premise was that the public, when they think of epilepsy, if they think of it at all, which they don't think about it enough considering how common a disease it is, when they think about it, they think the big bad convulsion, the generalized tonic-clonic seizure. They see it on TV, they hear about it in the news, they, you know, they understand that that is epilepsy, but that is all they understand is epilepsy. So all the other seizure types, which actually are more common than the generalized tonic-clonic convulsion, sort of get swept under the rug, and this has a lot of different consequences, and that's what I was talking about. One of the consequences, because people have never heard that a spell, a funny spell, or you know, a, a, a funny minute of feeling unusual or behaving unusual could be a seizure, they have no frame of reference for it. So many, many people go years and years and years, and the data that you were discussing that I presented was that in our Human Epilepsy Project, which is a study of people who, uh, from the time that they're diagnosed and treatment is initiated for their epilepsy, we follow them. But we take a very good history at the time that they come in and see us. And what we found is that if they have seizures other than convulsions, they don't understand it, and often their doctors don't understand it, and it's missed. So we found that diagnosis and treatment is delayed 80% uh, of the time if they have complex partial seizures and 90% of the time if they have simple partial seizures and that delay can last for years and often does. And you know also the consequence is that if people see somebody having a seizure that's not a convulsion they have no frame of reference and they don't know that it could be epilepsy they will not probably come and help that person they'll, they'll wonder what's going on and even, you know, interestingly enough, after the lecture, I was talking to the new uh, uh, chairman of the board of the Epilepsy Foundation who has a son, a grown son with epilepsy. And when he tries to explain his son's epilepsy to mm -hmm. other people, and they say, you know, I've never seen him have a convulsion. Well, he doesn't have convulsions. Everybody is like, well, if he doesn't have convulsions, yeah. what's it's going on? He's doing okay, right? Yeah. Right? You know, <laughs> yeah. so they, they really, they, yep. there's no frame of reference. And we, we really need to you know, educate the public and the medical community about seizures other than convulsions. Yeah, no, and I think you made a really great point about that, right? If, if people don't know about the problem, how do we take the next step? You know, a lot of it, you know, we have a lot of resources. I think, right, I mean, epilepsy, there's, we can't cure everyone, but we do a lot. We have a lot to offer, and it's a shame that we, a lot of times we don't get to that step, right, of where exactly. people can get to the treatments. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so we know... You know, even though we talk a lot about the third of people who continue to have seizures, there are two thirds of people that if we could get to them and diagnose them, we could take care of their problem. Yeah. And you know, I gave an example in the lecture yesterday of a young man who was having two seizures a day, you know, a lovely young man with a very bright future who was having two complex partial seizures a day for years and going to his doctor and explaining the symptom and not getting any care for it. And that particular gentleman who had had thousands of seizures by the time he actually got treated, from the moment he started taking medication, his seizures were completely controlled. And we always yeah. you know, somehow have this idea that if people are seizing for a long time, it's gonna be more difficult to get their seizures under control, but not so. I mean, he yeah. just needed somebody yeah to listen to him, mm. to make the diagnosis, yeah. and his problem could be completely eliminated. Yeah, yeah. Now, that's right, such a simple treatment can make a huge difference in somebody's life like that. I think you made a great point with that. And I think uh, I'd get it a little bit, and I'm sure you talked about this when you set up the, the Human Epilepsy Project study, and I think it's also kind of just to pick your brain a little bit about how when you see patients, but there's an idea of when you talk to a patient to get this history, right? I mean, there, I think there's an art to that, and I think in our busy clinical lives of getting tests and doing everything else, sometimes you just need to talk to the patient no to actually figure out what's going on. So just give us some insights about that, about how you, when you thought about, you know, the important things that key in on the history and, you know, how do we do it? How do we make sure we talk to the patient in the best way to get that data that we need? Well, I'm sure just like you, mm. there are too many questions <laughs> when you see somebody yeah. who's had the convulsion. And the one many question is, what were you feeling like 
leading up to the convulsion. And it's amazing that people don't ask that question more often, you know, particularly in the emergency room, they essentially never ask that question. And often somebody will tell you, oh, the hour before or the night before I was having these like queasy feelings or I was having repeated feelings of some sort, a repeated deja vu. And then when you ask them, and have you ever had that before, then you start to understand that they've had a long history of that, what we now realize is a simple partial seizure, but they're never asked about it. And then, you know, the other men, money question, which I talked about in the, mm -hmm. in the uh, talk, was, you know, do you ever have things that come out of the blue that seem out of context for what's going on around you, not provoked, you know, like anxiety, provoked anxiety, but things right. that just come out of the blue, yeah. and the time frame is seconds to minutes. Yeah. And uh, often when you ask that, you know, I always say, mm. and I tell my students that yeah. one of two things happens, either they look at you and they like yeah. can't quite figure out why you're asking that question, you know, yeah. or mm. their pupils just start to dilate <laughs> and they're yeah. like, yeah. you just read my mind. You just got mm. into my head. How did you do that? How yeah. did you know about those yeah. spells that I've yeah. never told anybody about? <laughs> that's right. right? Yeah. That that's true. true. You look like a genius, right? Don't you? Sometimes <laughs> it's like, you're like you're, you, know, you have powers they can't understand. So. It's like, yeah. oh my gosh, <laughs> yes, right. I yeah. do. You know, that's yes, right. I yeah. do. So. Yeah. You know, but but you know yeah. what what frustrates both of us, I'm sure, yeah. is when we see these people who have been to other doctors and been to other neurologists, and it's not, as I said yesterday, that those neurologists don't care or yeah. um, you know don't want to do the right thing. Yeah. It's just that, first of all, you know, for specifically in an emergency room, they're too busy and they yeah. can't ask those questions. Yeah. And even you know, in a in a general doctor's office or even a neurologist's office, the right. question: if somebody is not habitually seeing people with epilepsy, yeah. they just may not ask that question. Yeah, that's right. I think, and it it's uh, don't you think? And and I think the way you frame that is really important in the concepts of what happens, right? Because as a seizure being an activation of any part of the brain, if you try to just say the symptoms, it can be anything, right? And then you you, you have no you know you're just kind of lost at sea. But when you frame it in the idea of a change over time, you know, just like you did, it comes on, you know, uniquely and over, a, you know, a very stereotypical set of circumstances. It's, it's it doesn't seem that hard, but it, uh, but I hear you. I, you know, exactly. It's hard to to go back if you don't have the time or the ideas to do that. You miss it. So yeah, obviously, and, and you see way, that a lot. You know, like little panic attacks or things like that. People say, oh, and then you're thinking to yourself, you know. Is it a panic attack or is, right, it, right. or is it a seizure? Yeah. But it's yeah. like so easy to just say, has anybody seen you do it? Yeah. Has anybody been there with you? Yeah. And I, this just happened to me recently, mm. you know, with a, with a young woman who actually had been to two neurologists, mm. with two convulsions, and they said, okay, you know, we treated you, your convulsions are gone, everything's fine, yeah. you know, see me yeah. in a year. Yeah. And she, she came to me because she felt unsatisfied. I don't even know why. Right. And, I, and then she started telling me about her panic attacks and I said, has anybody seen your panic attack? She said, oh yeah, I had one at the kitchen table with my mother. Well, mm. can we call your mother? And with cell phones these days, it's yeah. so easy. Yeah. Got mom on the phone, she's like, yeah, she was talking to me and suddenly she like started to say things that didn't make sense and stare off and I didn't want to mention it to her because I know she knew she was really embarrassed. Mm, right, you know? right. And then, yeah. then you know. Yeah. You don't need an uh, EEG. Yeah. That, you know, then you know. Yeah, that's absolutely right, you know. So, no, it's an interesting, interesting phenomenon, isn't it? You know, the, and I think it, you know, there's also, I think, uh, you know, what I think is fun about what we do is we talk to patients and we're able to characterize a lot of what goes on and then we have tests that we can confirm it. But they both have to go together, right? I mean, you can't do one without the other. Um, and I think we'd be on the same page that maybe if you had to pick anything, you'd pick the history, you know, right. probably to point in the right direction. And say, yeah, you know. and we can track that down so much easier. And, yeah. these, and these little spells, you know, it's yeah. amazing, you know, when you ask the questions like, you know, I was, I was talking to a guy, you know, oh, simple partial seizures, you know, deja vu, does anything ever happen? You know, no, nobody ever knows that it's happening, it's just a feeling inside. I said, well, mm -hmm. you know, um, has anybody, you know, like ever said anything to you? if you've had the, them in, you know, in their presence and you mm. said, you know, it's funny that you say that because yeah. like sometimes my boss is just like says, yeah. are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's I don't right. know why he said yeah. that. <laughs> uh, some of the subtleties, right? <laughs> right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. You know, you know yeah. the, the sort yeah. of borderland between, yeah. but the history yeah. is, history yeah. is everything, right? Yeah.
Yeah, absolutely. So, but yeah. you know, we've we've created this form that we use mm. in the Human Epilepsy Project yeah. called the Discover Form, mm. which is the diagnostic interview uh, outside of the video EEG recording, mm. uh, which actually tries to operationalize in a structured interview the questions that you and I know how to ask because yeah. we've just seen. You know, I wouldn't know yeah. how to ask about Parkinson's symptoms, yeah. don't ask me. I wouldn't yeah. know how to ask about multiple <laughs> right. sclerosis right. symptoms. Right. Right. But I do know over many years yes. how yeah. to ask about epilepsy symptoms. So we tried to operationalize that and we now have this discover form yeah. that, you know, now people are we're saying, you know, it should be used in the emergency yeah, room. Yeah, that sounds like a great you idea. Know, not, you know? not every yeah. place has an epileptologist, not yeah. every place not every patient has access. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think that'd be a pretty low-lying fruit, don't you think? To just to get the word out about some of the basic principles. You know, you don't have to know every single epilepsy syndrome. Just the basic things that you put out there, which I'm, I assume is part of your form. Also, it kind of has that same idea of looking for a stereotypy of symptoms and those kind of things. So. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh,